Excuse me, do you know how I can get to Buckingham Palace? Oh, sorry mate, what did you say? Uh, mate? Um, <laughs> I want to visit Buckingham Palace. Do you know how I can get there? Oh, it's your first time here, innit? In it? Um, yeah, I think. Well, don't worry. You see that bloke over there, right? You go down that street and you walk for about 20 minutes, you'll get to Buckingham Palace. Or, you could take the bus. It'll cost about four quid, though. Bloke? Quid? In it? May? Hey, my name is Chris and welcome to Instant English. Now in this video, I'm going to teach you 12 very common British English slang words so when you come to the UK to study, to work or to travel, you can blend in with the locals. The first one is the most common of them all and you will hear it everywhere from all different types of people and that is mate. Mate, I can't just fuck off, yeah? Mate is British slang for friend. So it's a term of endearment. A common way it's used is with greetings, such as, all right, mate, which basically means, hello, friend. In US English, instead of using mate, they would often say buddy, dude, or pal. Mate is not only used between friends. You can use it with strangers or new acquaintances. For example, you get on the bus in London, the driver gives you your ticket after you pay. You can say, thanks, mate. You don't know this bus driver, it's just a nice, friendly way to say thank you. One thing to remember is that when mate is used to address somebody or to get someone's attention, it's usually used among men. However, you might often hear women referring to each other as good mates too. Number two, knackered. Oh, knackered. If you have been awake all night studying like crazy for an important exam, the next day you could say, I'm knackered. So knackered means that you're extremely tired. Other alternatives for knackered could be exhausted or shattered. And if you really want to emphasize that you are tired, perhaps after a long night of drinking down the pub, you could say, I'm absolutely knackered. Number three, cuppa. Anyone fancy a cuppa? There's nothing more British than a good old cup of tea. Apparently across the UK, 150 million cups of tea are drunk every single day. That's enough to fill 20 Olympic swimming pools. Now, if we are around our family or friends, we don't normally say cup of tea. We shorten it to cuppa. For example, do you want a cup of tea becomes do you want a cuppa? And in the north of England, places like Manchester, Liverpool or Newcastle, they say brew instead of cuppa or cup of tea. Mum, can you make me a brew, please? By the way, whenever you meet a British person, ask them this question. What is the correct way to make a cup of tea? You'll be surprised how passionate Brits are on this topic. Number four, skint. She's gorgeous, I agree, and clearly super smart, but you're unemployed and skint. If you are skint, you have no money whatsoever. Zero, zilch, nothing. Skint comes from the word skinned, which also meant without money, and both of them were used for a while. However, the usage of skint faded away in the 20th century, and now most people just use skint. If you're around the London area, you might hear the word brassic, I'm brassic, which also means you have no money and is Cockney rhyming slang for skint. The full phrase is brassic lint, skint. But people in London just say brassic for short. Number five, in it. No, I'm just saying in it, I do music in it. In it is a contraction of isn't it and is used at the end of a statement to make it a question. For example, English food is so delicious, isn't it? Or in other words, English food is so delicious, isn't it? Obviously, that is complete nonsense. English food is terrible, just look at it. Now, because in it is slang, people don't always use it instead of isn't it. They may use other tag questions too. For example, I'm a really good teacher, aren't I? I'm a really good teacher, in it. They live in London, don't they? They live in London, in it. Number six, bloke. I met this bloke. Bloke is a noun referring to a common man, any man at all. It doesn't have negative or positive connotations. However, you can use adjectives with bloke to make it positive or negative. If somebody tells you, you are a good bloke, it simply means you are a good man. You have a good character. In the USA, they would normally say guy instead of bloke. 
He's a nice guy. He's a nice bloke. Number seven, Mingin. I have to get Robbie alone away from that Mingin Lindsay. We have Scotland to thank for this word. In Scottish English, Ming is an old word for a bad smell. So originally, Mingin meant smelly. Nowadays, Mingin has evolved to mean disgusting in general. For example, Justin, what were you thinking? That outfit is Mingin. Number eight, quid. Take that 25 quid, you stick it in the bank until it clears. Quid is another way to refer to money, or more specifically, the currency in the UK, pounds. So when you order a pint of beer in a pub, expect them to say, that'll be five quid. Oh yeah, beer is expensive in England. You could even use it with a couple of phrases we learned earlier. Mate, I'm skin, lend us a couple of quid. One thing to remember is that we don't add S to quid, even if it's plural, like 20 quid or 50 quid, no S. Also, you may hear some other slang words related to money like fiver or tenner, which basically means five pounds or 10 pounds. Number nine, gutted. I'm gutted, absolutely gutted. I failed my driving test three times, and on the third time, I was gutted because I felt like I was never going to pass. True story. Luckily, I did pass on the fourth time of trying. So gutted means you are very sad or disappointed. With this one, you could add absolutely between the pronoun and gutted to emphasize that you're very sad. For example, I was absolutely gutted when England lost the final. <laughs> still, still hard now. When was the last time you were gutted about something? Tell me in the comments below. Number 10, cheeky. And your fans, your little cheeky one. Cheeky is used to describe something that is slightly naughty or considered to be misbehaving. For example, do you fancy a cheeky pint? So in this case, maybe the person you're asking has something that they need to do and they shouldn't be going down the pub for a beer. Also, it implies that it will be quick. Do you fancy a quick pint? Do you fancy a cheeky pint? Number 11, take the piss. He'll take the piss out of you anyway. Mate, what happened to your hair? It looks like they put a bowl on your head. Sorry, I'm just taking the piss. To take the piss means to make fun of somebody or to mock someone. So in other words, I made a joke about my friend's hair and then I said, I'm sorry, I'm only joking because he's my friend and his haircut isn't that bad, right? You could also say, take the piss when you are annoyed. For example, 2000 pounds for the new iPhone. Apple is taking the piss. And I save the best until last, trolleyed. Because he's gonna spend the weekend getting trolleyed with his mates. Trolleyed means that you are extremely drunk. Maybe so drunk that you have to be taken home in a shopping trolley. Other ways to say drunk in British English could be plastered, hammered, pissed, and so many more. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this cheeky video and you learned some great new British English slang words. Don't be too gutted though that the video's over. If you want to continue practicing your English, try one of these videos. Go, click. And if you enjoyed this video, smash the like button. I'll see you next time.